August 1st, 2014. USA Basketball is putting on a showcase for the fans. Nothing more than an inner squad scrimmage. It feels like just yesterday I was watching this game, but it has been nearly five years. Chandler Parsons was still relevant, Stephen Curry had yet to bless us with his record-shattering season, Bradley Beal was the youngest player on Team USA, and Paul George was one of the league's brightest young stars. In fact, after his incredible performance in the 2013 playoffs where a 22-year-old George and the Pacers pushed the defending champs to seven games, and he did this, we were all but certain Paul George was the future. He was young, he was athletic, big, fast, he could handle the ball, shoot. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this clip right here. If you haven't seen it before, trust me, you don't want to. It was gruesome and it completely threw PG's career onto a different path. And just as crucial, this injury halted the Pacers progress towards a championship. They were one game away from the NBA Finals just two months before this August matchup. But at this very moment, all of their title hopes were gone in an instant. This is what injuries do. They ruin seasons, they can ruin careers, and they can put an end to championship runs. Fast forward to June 2019, and over the past five years, I've watched this revolutionary, nearly unstoppable team from the Bay Area walk through the NBA like they've discovered some secret ingredient to NBA titles. And although I'm not a Warriors fan, it was fun to watch this dynasty unfold before my eyes and witness history firsthand. But as much as I appreciate greatness and dominance, I've got to admit, watching them end up in the finals year after year after year really started to get boring. I mean, it's not their fault, they're exceptional. We play to win and they've been the best at winning for the last half decade. Like the saying goes, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. It was all fun and games when Steph and Clay were just those splash bros from Oakland who were lighting teams up from downtown. But the second they became a threat to the NBA's hierarchy, the shenanigans weren't so fun anymore. But then DeMarcus Cousins got injured, and then Curry, and Looney, and Kevin Durant, and then Clay. And just like that, the Golden State Warriors were no longer the bad guys. Five years despising Golden State's incredible dominance, and a few injuries later, I find myself sympathizing with a beaten, exhausted, short-handed Warriors team that displayed more heart and grit in the last week than they did in the last three years. See, injuries will do that. When players get injured as fans, we oftentimes can put our bias aside and appreciate that in these moments, this is more than just a game. Injuries make teams more vulnerable. They can turn a villain into an underdog. Injuries make superstars a little bit more relatable and can bring an end to entire dynasties. And this got me thinking, after watching the most powerful team in basketball fall apart in the blink of an eye, what were some of the most impactful and devastating injuries in NBA history? Injuries that directly impacted the outlook of a promising season and in some cases the outlook of an entire franchise. Of course, we can all recall notable NBA injuries that derailed up and coming careers, but what about those that put a halt to a championship run? Injuries that almost undoubtedly lost a team a championship or championships. It's the 2012 NBA playoffs. The Chicago Bulls are finding the most success they've ever had since the departure of Michael Jordan. All thanks to an incredibly deep and talented roster that had Joakim Noah, Kyle Korver, veteran experience with Richard Hamilton, Carlos Boozer, a young Taj Gibson, an all-star in Luol Deng, and a rookie Jimmy Butler. All led by the remarkable Derrick Rose in his prime. They had just came off a 62-win season and a loss against the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals, and although their young star was dealing with nagging injuries, the Bulls still managed to win 50 games in the regular season, tied for the best record in the entire NBA. 
Now, 50 wins may not seem like a lot, but if you recall, this was the lockout season where teams played 66 games, which meant 50 games was nearly a 76% winning percentage, the fourth highest in franchise history. This Bulls team was good. Throughout the regular season, Rose dealt with injuries that sidelined him for 43 of 82 games, but the Bulls organization knew what the end goal was and how to get there. With just two weeks left in the regular season, Rose laced up again, fresh and healthy, ready for the playoffs. The Bulls won 18 of their last 20 games with Derrick Rose on the floor and were looking better than ever. This was their year. In the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, the Bulls were facing off against the 76ers, a team that they were clearly better than. This round was supposed to be a warm up, a bit of a run through for this Bulls team to prepare them for the inevitable rematch against the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. And to make matters worse for Philadelphia, Derrick Rose was looking like an MVP again. This afternoon, two to shoot, Rose outside, puts it in. In Game 1, Rose goes off for 23-9-9, and leading the Bulls to a 12-point victory. The game is in the bag, under a minute and a half left in the fourth and a lead too big for the 76ers to come back from. Derrick Rose shouldn't even be in the game at this point. But he was, and we had to witness one of the most devastating injuries in league history. We're looking to sweep you guys. You wanted us. You were crying out that you bypassed the, the harder team in Miami. Uh oh, uh oh, Rose came down bad on his left foot. See him holding onto his knee, holding onto his knee and down. In a game where the Bulls already had an insurmountable lead with only 1 minute and 24 seconds left, the youngest MVP in NBA history goes down with a season ending injury. In fact, not just season ending an injury that rerouted the path of his entire career. What makes this injury even more devastating is the fact that this Bulls team was on a path to greatness. They had the best defense in the NBA, they had depth, they had a great coach, and they were tied for the most wins in the regular season that year. They were hungry, relentless, and they had just came off a playoff run that landed them in the Eastern Conference Finals just the year prior. In fact, the Bulls had even split their regular season series with the Heat that year, and the Heat went on to win the NBA championship in five games. This was supposed to be the resurgence of Bulls basketball and a legacy cemented in time by Rose and his squad. But tragedy struck, the Bulls lost their superstar, lost that first round series, and have yet to recover. It's 2017. The Houston Rockets have found a recipe for success in their superstar James Harden and a roster deeper than arguably any other in the league. They have length, they can defend, they have veterans, and they have youth. But they're missing just one key piece. After a trip to the Western Conference Finals and a couple playoff runs that felt a bit underwhelming, the Rockets eventually found their missing ingredient. A man who, ironically, had never found much playoff success himself, Chris Paul. In his first season with the Rockets, Paul helped lead the team to their most wins in franchise history by a wide margin. And for the entire season, Paul was the catalyst for the league's most lethal offense aside from Golden State's. But you can make an argument that in that season, the Rockets were even deadlier than the Warriors. Because in those playoffs, we witnessed the impossible. Or, at least, almost did. Game 6 of the Western Conference Finals. The Rockets are up 3-2 in a series against a fully healthy Golden State Warriors team and are coming off back-to-back -back wins. They had the momentum, they were ahead in the series, and they were the better team. And then... Shot clock to 5! Paul guarded by Cook! Paul on the spin! Chris Paul is down. Chris Paul is hurt. With under a minute left in game five, Chris Paul goes down with an injury, one that would keep him out for the rest of the playoffs. And in his absence, the Rockets were not the same team. Their captain, the conductor of their offense, and their leader was no longer on the floor to set the tone, and it was very apparent. 
The Rockets went on to lose game 6 and 7, and if that wasn't devastating enough, the Warriors went on to sweep the Cavs in the finals to win the NBA championship. The Rockets were 48 minutes away from the finals and almost presumably an NBA title, but fell short all because of one awkward landing. Before the Cleveland Cavaliers ever brought a championship home in the biggest comeback in NBA history, they were caught on the opposite side of things just one season prior. In 2015, the Cavs had put together one of the best seasons in franchise history. With the arrival of LeBron James and Kevin Love, the power in the East had completely shifted overnight. Once again, the Cavaliers were relevant, they were winning, and they were legitimate contenders for a title. After sweeping the Boston Celtics in the first round, it was clear that the Cavs were serious. They had all the tangibles of a championship team. Talent, offensive firepower, and what they lacked on the defensive end, they made up for with the best player on the planet. Unfortunately, after the first round in the playoffs, they also lacked the help of Kevin Love. In game four of the first round against the Celtics while chasing a rebound, Love was put in an armbar by Kelly Olenek that would make the WWE proud. And because this box out from hell, Love missed the remainder of the playoffs. This was huge. Looking back in hindsight, this was a playoff defining moment. But the Cavs still had LeBron, Kyrie, and the rest of the Cavs team to win it all winning eight out of their next 10 games, including a sweep against the Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals. This team, even without Kevin Love, would prove to be enough to win a championship. That is, until... Irving falls down, hangs on, gets it to J.R. Smith. Can't hit the three, Green with another rebound. And Kyrie Irving is hurt, limping up the floor. In a turn of terrible luck, just 11 games after Love went down with a season-ending injury, Kyrie Irving was sent to the locker room with one as well. Their big man, their interior threat, their outside threat, their killer, and 40 points a night, gone. At this point, it was all but over for the Cavs. With two of their three stars down, the Cavaliers still managed to win two games in the finals behind a historic performance by LeBron, a series that introduced us all to Matthew Della Vadova, and an entire team effort. If the Cavaliers would have had Love and Irving, this series would have been very different. But Kevin and Kyrie got injured, the Warriors won their first ring in the Splash Bros era, and the rest is history. Now, this next one was the inspiration for this video. A series of events so unfortunate, so catastrophic that it seemed destined to happen. Years building up to a few key moments in time where everything would come crashing down. Fast forward nearly three years and here we are. The 2019 NBA Finals. The Toronto Raptors just made the best regular season team in the Bucks look ill-prepared and overmatched. The Warriors took a huge blow by losing KD in Game 5 against the Rockets in the second round, but in Golden State fashion, they cruised to a win in Game 6. They swept the Blazers in the Western Conference Finals, and they found themselves in the NBA Finals for the fifth straight season. Now, not too much has to be said about this Warriors team. They've got it all, and they have rewritten NBA history right in front of us. They've seen it all and accomplished just about everything there is to accomplish. Well, everything except a three-peat. Only a few teams in league history have ever achieved such a feat, cemented in basketball immortality. And at the beginning of this season, a three-peat was all but certain. Through a roller coaster of a regular season, the Warriors still finished with the most wins in the Western Conference and for most of the season looked like they were coasting. Because we all know they have a switch that they can flip at any time. An extra gear to put themselves over the top. And the postseason looks no different. Until, of course... Ibaka trying to stay with Durant, knocks it away and Durant's limping. 
Durant goes down holding his leg. Ibaka goes up and is fouled down the other end. And Durant grabbing that right leg. It's the right calf that put him out. After making a gutsy comeback in Game 5 of the Finals, Durant went down with an injury that after a second viewing was much worse than it looked the first time around. This was hard to watch, but KD showed the basketball world that his love for the game extends any metric we've put onto him up to this point. And although Durant has been huge to the Warriors' success, we've seen them win it all without him. And this time around, they have DeMarcus Cousins at their disposal. After winning Game 5 in nail-biting fashion, the Warriors really had a shot at a comeback. They finally had a chance to truly redeem themselves after the infamous 3-1 blown lead finals. What could possibly go wrong? Lowry gets passed, falls down, lost the ball. Thompson running the floor, and a foul. And Thompson grabs his left knee, now writhing in pain. Steph Curry slamming the ball on the court, so upset. Green went up to block it. And just like that, all hopes of a comeback, another title, and a three-peat were gone in what could possibly be the most devastating two-game stretch in playoff history, the Warriors lost their finals MVP and one of the best shooters in league history in a 72-hour stretch. For the first time in years, I found myself actually feeling bad for them. Watching KD get carried off the court, watching Clay come back after tearing his ACL to sink two free throws, and watching Stephen Curry do everything in his power to keep his team alive. Considering everything that led up to this point, there just really wasn't much they could do. It was a valiant effort, but like many other teams have learned before them, sometimes injuries can be a team's saving grace, and sometimes it can be their demise. All of these teams were on a path to a championship, and because of one misstep, because of one move or one wrong decision, that championship was out of reach. And this really puts things into perspective. It takes a million right decisions and actions to win a ring, but it only takes one injury to lose a ring. Injuries that cost everything. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.